Hey everyone, so recently in a conversation that I had, I was just talking about some of the unpleasant things that you can face as a Christian, as a believer. And, uh, you know, just what what the Apostle Paul, for instance, had to say about, about suffering. James also uh, mentioned suffering. Obviously, uh, the disciples, the, the early church, they suffered a lot for the sake of Christ. Now, us today, we can also um, suffer and endure unpleasant things because we're living for God. That, and that, that's kind of the bottom line. But I do want to read a couple scriptures here. And I want to start uh, with something that, that Paul said. He says, I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church. And that's in Colossians 1 verse 24. So it's, it's very clear there that Paul A, and we know from, from history and the things that Paul the Apostle went through, um, that he suffered and endured some pretty, pretty hard things. He, he had been beaten, he had been falsely accused, he'd been imprisoned, he, he was in a shipwreck, you know, just like crazy things like that. And uh, he decided that he would rejoice during those moments that, he, you know, somehow he, he's looking at this in a positive light because it's happening to him for the cause of Christ. And, you know, he attributes it uh, to Christ, to to the church, the body of Christ, uh, suffering for even who he's, who he's writing to at that time. But, you know, if, if I was here right now sitting with Paul the Apostle, like, A, that would be cool. B, I would be asking him, like, how how in the world, like, how in your right mind do you, you know, think of suffering as a positive thing? How do you, how do you learn to rejoice in the middle of your trial? Well, there is an answer to that. I don't have all the answers, but uh, I do think I have something that will help you out today. I, I do want to read another verse from James this time before we go any deeper. James chapter one, verse two, he says, my brethren counted all joy when you fall into various trials. So again, there's, a, there's that concept that there's a trial, there's something negative that you're enduring in life, but you're gonna look at that negative circumstance as much as you hate it and as much as you, you know, the human part of you despises being in the middle of it, you have to decide to count it a joy. Now, th this, is, this is what I what I was pondering, pondering with Paul. And um, I, this helped me, so hopefully it, it will help you as well. Now, sometimes we, we look at, you know, the Apostle Paul or, or James, or one of the, the early uh, church um, missionaries, you know, people that you can, you can look at their life and, you know, maybe they were preaching the gospel and people from that community literally like shun them and beat them and, and kick them out of the community. And it's very obvious that they were suffering for the cause of Christ. Why? Because they were preaching the gospel and there is a, a deliberate attack because of what they were doing. Now, fast forward to today. Yes, that still happens, of course, but, and, you know, in some other countries around the world, even more so than what happens, you know, here in Canada, for instance. But so, so we can we can kind of look at it and be like, you know, I, I'm not really, you know, I have these things that are happening, but like I can't I can't connect the dots here, right? Like so, 
like I really don't feel like I'm I'm suffering for the the sake or the cause of Christ. Like I'm I'm obviously suffering and there there are bad things happening, but like where where do I connect the dots here? All right? And because because it is much easier to find joy in your suffering when you can connect the dots and see that you're suffering for something uh, that has eternal value. Now, what I do want to say here that, that I think will be helpful to you is if you're serving Jesus to the best of your ability and you're pursuing the calling that, that God has placed on your life and you're navigating through life and to the, to the best of your ability, you're, you're serving him, you're doing things that, that are pleasing to him. Now, understand that there might not be like a direct visible attack, you know, on your faith or or on your preaching or, or you may not be shunned because you're a Christian that that might not be happening. So it might not be super clear to you, like how to connect these dots. Um, but I do want to tell you just being in the will of God, just serving God alone and doing what he wants you to do is enough for you to become become a target for the enemy. It's enough to make the enemy mad. Okay, we need to understand that we're not always fighting against flesh and blood, right? We're not, you know, out there in the streets always, you know, in in some kind of like big fight because of our faith, but but we're we're being attacked by spiritual wickedness. In high places, there's there's a spiritual realm where there's spiritual things, obviously that that we don't always see, and I think that's why at times we struggle with with connecting the dots because we don't always see what's going on. Yeah, there's there's a storm and there's a suffering taking place in your life, but it's like you know where where is this coming from? Well, sometimes you don't know where it's coming from. It's coming from the spiritual realm. You can't always connect the dots. It's not like you are out there on your, your curbside preaching the gospel and your neighbor comes over and punches you in the face. That's not always going to be how it looks. Well, maybe it did look like that to you today, but for me, it didn't. But guess what? I did deal with some very negative circumstances today, but this is how I connect the dots. Guess what? When I woke up this morning, what did I do? Yes, I drank coffee. Yes, I did those those normal everyday human things, but you know what else I did? I got into the Word of God. Okay, that's something I do in the morning. I read my Bible. Guess what else I did? I prayed. Guess what else I did? I worshiped God for who He is. Guess what else I did? I praised God for allowing me to be His child, and I just exalted Him for who He is and declared it in my house. Now, this isn't something, some kind of list of statements that is something that I can boast in. No, this is something that, that I believe is necessary as a person of faith. And this is something that, that I want to do. I want to welcome Jesus into my life every single day because I cannot walk this walk alone. I cannot live life. I cannot get through a day without him, nor do I wish to try to. I, I really do not have that desire. I know what it looks like. I know what it feels like to try to live a day without prayer, without reading your Bible. You know, there's there's moments you don't even have to be backsliding. There's moments where, where you know, life gets really busy and maybe you, you didn't have enough time. You slept in or whatever the case may be. And I know from experience that that really can take a toll on your day and mess your day up. So I welcome Jesus into my life every day. So you know what happens when you do that? Sometimes you get attacked because you become a threat in the spiritual realm. You become a threat and we don't always know the, the full extent of what we're even doing in the spiritual realm. Sometimes we're we're, we're praying these prayers and we, we don't even really know exactly, you know, what we're, we're praying about. You know, if, you, if you're praying in the, in the spirit and you're interceding, things like that, it's, it's not always abundantly obvious 
what's being done, but you know that there's something good and there's something positive being done in the spirit. So that's what I wanted to encourage you with today is that you may be suffering and, and you may not be able to totally connect the dots, but if you're living for God, if you're if you're praying those prayers, if you're reading the word, if you're living a life, you know, and you're, you're striving for righteousness, you're, you're, you're going for that target, you're trying to be right in the eyes of God, and you're saying the things that God wants you to say, and you're doing the things that, that God wants you to do, well, guess what? You're probably going to have some suffering in this life, but we can take that and, and know that it will be absolutely worth it. And because it's worth it, and because we're investing into something eternal, into the kingdom of God that lasts forever, that is going to way outlast this world that we're going to be suffering in temporarily, we got to remember that. And when you remember that, when you remember the grand scheme, you remember why you're suffering, then you can count it a joy and you can rejoice. And it's, it's kind of this... Um, you know, strange thing, but it's like, you know, God, I, I count this an honor that I get to suffer for you. Like I, I'm part of your body. This isn't just about me or someone attacking Nick, right? I'm probably not worth attacking when we're just talking about like very surface human level. Okay. I'm, I'm just like a normal average guy living my life. Like I'm not much of a, a threat to um, society. But when you think of the kingdom of God, you think of spiritual things, then there's, you know, there's all those other layers. So I just want to encourage you today, rejoice in those sufferings. Keep your head up, keep in the game. God is, God sees everything that you're going through. And in the end, one day you're going to be, you're going to be rewarded for that. Listen, when we're up there with Jesus, when he comes to, when he comes to call us home, and, and we're dancing on those streets of gold and we're seeing him face to face and we're worshiping and praising him and his marvelous light, just like never before, man. It's gonna be so worth it. So be encouraged, God bless you. Keep on keeping on, keep rejoicing in your suffering. <laughs>